Welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Baring, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm continuing the discussion on weight loss, what you haven't heard, why you are not losing weight. So this is part two. Last week, of course, we were discussing this and continuing this conversation. So make sure that you stay tuned right until the end of today's episode. I am talking about different causes of weight gain, probably things that you haven't heard, as well as what you can do, of course, naturally to help to prevent that gain of weight. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe. Click that bell to turn on your post notifications. If you do have questions and comments throughout the show, please make sure that you put them below. I appreciate all the thumbs up, all the likes, and all those wonderful things that you can share throughout today's episode. So weight loss. Let's talk about leptin resistance. So if you don't know what leptin resistance is, this is something that I've discussed at length in other videos, but leptin is actually a hormone that's secreted from our fat cells and it's giving a signal to our brain and gives an account as to how much energy we have. So do we have enough electrons? Do we not have enough electrons? This then signals the brain for us in terms of survival, do we need to go and seek out more food or can we turn Turn off the hunger so that we're not always looking for that next meal. Now, when our leptin signaling is messed up and we have that leptin resistance, what happens is that we actually have high leptin, but the brain isn't registering that high leptin. So you get this dichotomy of still searching for food, always being hungry. And if you've gone through this and you didn't know that it was leptin resistance, this may help to shed a little bit of light as to why you're hungry all the time. But at the same time, that has many causes in terms of that leptin resistance. So whether it is altered circadian rhythm, so not going to bed at regular times, not waking up at regular times, as well as the intake of those polyunsaturated fatty acids can be a cause of leptin resistance, eating a ton of carbs, alcohol, and having insulin issues. So you're spiking your insulin and you're eating too frequently throughout the day, that can be another cause of this leptin resistance. Also the big one, is lack of natural sunlight, not being grounded, too much EMF exposure and blue light. So toxic blue light, artificial light exposure, especially at the wrong times of day, is really compromising to our leptin signaling and can cause you to gain weight. So this is something that it's really important that we really mitigate our risks against some of these you know, radiations that we're getting in our environment. But at the same time, there are great ways to fix your leptin resistance, which of course I will share. Another cause for the leptin resistance, of course, is chronic inflammation, a lot of stress that isn't well handled by the body, and aspects of leaky gut syndrome as well. So all of these factors can lead to that leptin resistance and, of course, that weight gain. So what we want to do is we want to fix this leptin resistance once and for all. And tip number one for fixing the leptin resistance and to help with weight loss, of course, is to get that more sun. So you've heard me talk about this in other episodes. If you missed my entire show all about the hidden benefits of the sun, please check it out. One of the important things about the early morning sun is that it stimulates and that those light rays coming into our eyes stimulate something called melanopsin. And melanopsin helps with the secretion of our melatonin later, of course, when we're sleeping. So without getting that natural sunlight in our eyes in the morning, that whole signaling process won't be maximized and we won't be able to create and secrete proper amounts of our melatonin for that good night's sleep, which is part and parcel of being able to oxidize our fat. Most of our fat is actually liberated while we're sleeping. So this is point number one, probably the most important point in my opinion. So getting enough of that early morning sunlight in your eyes, on your skin, on your abdomen as well, that has other aspects and benefits, which I will share as well as getting grounded so making sure that you have bare feet on the earth allowing for those natural electrons to come into your body especially in the morning is really really helpful will help to set you up for a healthy day and allow for that proper functioning of your entire system as it's connected of course to nature and to the electromagnetism of the earth
Tip number two is to get enough sleep and of course to have a regular sleep pattern and to fall into that deep sleep. This is when our body best detoxifies. This is when our melatonin is secreted. This is when as well our brain allows for that detox mechanism to happen and our thyroid is most active. So we know that the thyroid gland has a lot to do with regulating our metabolism and our ability to shed that fat. So when we don't have all of these systems operational to their full potential, what happens is we can gain weight. So getting that restful night's sleep is very important. If you missed my episodes on sleep, make sure you check them out. Tip number three for fixing the leptin resistance is to use cold therapy. So here in Canada, we don't have problems with that, especially in our cold Canadian winters. Getting out into the cold and allowing our bodies to cold adapt is a great way to spike our metabolism and to really help with our brown fat accumulation. So that's something that is is metabolically very active, turning, you know, our white fat, not so favorable fat into that beijing and that brown fat, which is our thermogenesis, our body's ability to make that internal body heat, which is great for burning off those calories and to really boost that metabolism and that fat burning effect. So there's different ways of doing cold therapy. I share that in other videos. Make sure you check them out. Tip number four is to exercise and not overdo it. So when you're first fixing your leptin resistance, you don't want to overdo it with the exercise because that will have a negative impact on finding that hormonal regulation. But at the same time, once your leptin signaling is getting better, doing some weight bearing exercises and weight lifting is fantastic. Yes, for women as well. I highly, highly recommend it. And some HIIT training as well. So that's the high intensity interval training, which is fantastic to not only shed the body weight, but to really get bursts of that metabolic activity and your cardiovascular impacts of that are fantastic for keeping the hormones in check, but at the same time targeting that fat loss. And if you can do your exercise in a more fasted state, so when your insulin is low, you'll get even more benefits for that fat burning effect. Tip number five is to use specific herbal medicines, which are known to help with the leptin signaling. So one of my favorites is African wild mango seed. And it was shown in one study that it helped to decrease overall waist circumference and body weight in those participants who were taking the African wild mango seed, as well as Morris Alba. So this is white mulberry. And this actually has been shown to regulate the gene expression of leptin. So we know with our leptin signaling, that is really important. And Gymnema Sylvester. So this is another herbal medicine that I love that significantly suppresses leptin levels and insulin as well. So helping to find that balance between leptin signaling and insulin. So usually it's the leptin resistance that will happen first, followed by the insulin resistance. So the two go hand in hand and we definitely want to do our best. And some of these herbal medicines are great for helping to balance these hormones out. Tip number six is to limit our artificial blue light exposure, especially after the sun has gone down. So we know in nature, the sun goes down for a reason. It has a lot to do with our hormonal signaling to be able to fall asleep, for our melatonin secretion, for our proper thyroid function as we sleep. And that essentially is our metabolism. Now, what happens when the sun has gone down and we still have lights on in our homes, in our offices, wherever we're at, this will send signals to the brain. The brain doesn't differentiate where that blue light is coming. Now our mitochondria do this differently. They can tell the difference, but that blue light coming into our eyes will signal the brain to be awake and to be lively. And now we don't have proper melatonin secretion. We won't have a proper sleep. Our thyroid won't be active. We can't burn off that fat as we sleep. So this is really important. So limiting that blue light toxicity is very important after the sun has gone down. Wearing the blue light blocking glasses is highly, highly recommended, especially when you are close to bedtime and you need to have that restful night's sleep. Tip number seven is to limit your EMF exposure. And I'm talking about the non-native EMF, so the not natural ones, the ones that we get from our Wi-Fi, our cell phones, cell phone towers. Now 5G is an issue. So we definitely want to limit this exposure because this has a negative impact on how our cells are functioning. And one of the things that is compromising is the formation and allowing of too much calcium to flood into our cells through 
the VGCCs, voltage gated calcium channels. If you want to learn more about how to mitigate all your risks against those EMFs, please check out my show on EMF exposure. Tip number eight is to lower your carbohydrate intakes, especially at the beginning when you're trying to fix the leptin resistance. Now, you know, insulin, leptin levels, they are connected. And if we're constantly spiking our insulin, we cannot burn that fat. And we have difficulty now finding that proper regulation for our leptin signaling in our brain as well. So we really want to limit, especially the refined carbohydrates, the the fun ones to eat and the very pleasurable ones for a lot of people, but at the same time, not so healthy for our insulin levels. And tip number nine for fixing our leptin resistance to help with weight loss is to avoid snacking throughout the day. You also want to avoid eating at least three hours before bedtime in order for the proper hormonal secretion of those hormones while we're sleeping and your leptin signaling. You need to be in that fasted state and if you eat too close to bedtime you will not have that proper leptin secretion and signaling and being able to attach to that leptin receptor so that your brain can actually register that, you know, your leptin is on track and you don't need to seek out more food. So if you're just tuning in, I'm talking all about weight loss today, what you haven't heard and why you are not losing weight. Thank you for tuning in. We stream, of course, live on YouTube, Facebook, and most weeks on TikTok and Instagram as well. Thank you for tuning in. Please give me a thumbs up and all of those great things that you do during a show. Please, if you do have a question or comment. As the show goes on, please drop it in the comment section below. So continuing our conversation about weight loss and now thyroid hormones. So I touched upon this a little bit. We want to optimize our thyroid function, especially for someone who has an underperforming thyroid. You know that the propensity to hold on to extra body weight is definitely there. You don't have enough energy. You could be lethargic. And there's a downregulation of your metabolism. So this is very much related to that leptin signaling and that leptin resistance because in a high leptin in state, we have increased inflammation in the body. And what happens here is that the leptin receptor now will have difficulty in that connection with leptin. And now the brain isn't getting the signal of low leptin because it's not connected to the receptor. Our leptin levels appear high and we continue to seek out more food. And now we have even more inflammation. So one of the markers for this that can be tested in your blood work is called the highly sensitive CRP. P. And this is C-reactive protein, which is a marker for increased inflammation in the body and higher cortisol levels as well. And the problem with this chronic inflammation and high leptin levels, this can compromise that conversion of our T4 hormone into the active T3. And that happens in the liver. When we don't have that proper leptin signaling, this will not happen. So now what's going to potentially happen is that we have too much of that T4 that gets shunted into reverse T3. So that's another test that can be done in your blood work. If you have a high reverse T3 level, this will now be an indicator of the leptin resistance. And that high reverse T3 actually downregulates your T3, which is your active thyroid hormone, which of course is your metabolism that is your fat burner. So this is really again, going back to that leptin signaling and that leptin resistance. So really fixing this leptin signaling and the leptin resistance is really important for your overall metabolism, but for your thyroid health as well. Now, what we don't always realize is that our thyroid gland is most active during sleep and that deep sleep and usually in that fasted state. So that's one of the reasons why I suggest not having, you know, too much food close to bedtime. You want to be more in that fasted state so that all your hormones can work in concert with one another to maximize that fat burning as, and it's really fat oxidation as you're sleeping. The whole word, I I use the term um, and I, it's not always the right thing that for, to say fat burning. We don't really burn fat. We oxidize our fat. Um, so forgive me when I make my mistakes, but at the same time, this is all, you know, part and parcel of, of some of the terms that you hear out there um, and how you can connect with the information. So we always do want to support our thyroid gland and it requires certain cofactors 
factors to function optimally. Now, this is especially because I know you may be thinking, okay, I'm taking something, I'm taking medication for my low thyroid, that means my thyroid is activated. Well, not always necessarily that you're getting the cofactors, which I'll list now so that you can really look for these, make sure you're getting them in the diet or in a great supplement, which I promise we'll put a link at the bottom of this video that you know, puts together some of these important cofactor ingredients for your thyroid. So the first one is iodine. So we need iodine, of course, to make our active thyroid hormones. And I like to always get iodine from a whole food source. The types of iodine that are sometimes in supplements aren't always the natural whole food types of iodine and, the, and metabolically they work a little bit differently. You always want to look for one that is either from seaweed and I love, you know, particularly kelp, which also has some other cofactors that help to support the use of that iodine in the body like magnesium, potassium, calcium, and boron, and this supports your thyroid function as well. Now, another important cofactor for thyroid function is tyrosine. So tyrosine plus iodine makes your T4, and of course that then is converted into your T3, your active thyroid hormone. So really, really important that you have this important amino acid. And I love ashwagandha. Now, ashwagandha is an important adaptogenic herb and it helps with insulin but also with cortisol balance so for stress which is really important and helps to quench free radicals that specifically target the thyroid gland so that combination of ingredients is fantastic for supporting that thyroid health and to help with that weight loss now some of the supplements that can also be used for weight loss are and my favorites include EGCG so if you don't know what that is I won't say the long technical name name, but this is found in green tea. And studies have shown that the combination of the EGCG from green tea, as well as caffeine, help to really target that fat burning, the fat oxidation, especially of that belly fat. And the belly fat tends to be the most difficult to lose, it's somewhat related to your hormonal imbalance and cortisol, it could be estrogen related as well. So targeting that belly fat is a great bonus when you take in combination the green tea plus a little bit of caffeine. I also love Panax ginseng. So Panax ginseng is known to help to stabilize insulin levels, but your stress hormones like your cortisol as well. Maca is a great adaptogenic herbal medicine as well. It helps with weight loss and helps to target, especially when it's cortisol related and stress related, helps to target that belly fat as well. I also love calcium. So a lot of people aren't necessarily getting enough absorbable calcium in their diet. And in the state of having low calcium, your body actually can go into something called lipogenesis, the making of more fat so that's not necessarily what we always want this is just five pounds of fat and and for those of you who don't know what that looks like visually, when you lose five pounds of fat, that's a lot of weight. So being able to not make too much of this is probably at an advantage, especially if it's the white fat. And again, we have different types of fat in the body, brown fat being more metabolically active, our white fat not so much. So making sure that we get enough calcium so that we're not making extra fat is definitely a bonus, as well as magnesium. We know that calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D3 all work hand in hand to be able to stimulate our proper metabolism and getting the right ratios of each. Of course, vitamin D from natural sunlight exposure. Some people do need to perhaps supplement or get it from high dietary sources, which can, can be quite difficult, but finding that balance. And of course, magnesium, if you've not seen my videos before, I prefer magnesium in the morning, calcium closer to bedtime. And there's a reason for that. Uh, check out my magnesium videos if you don't know why I say that. And of course, those you can find here on YouTube, as well as your vitamin D. So I like actually my magnesium and my vitamin D3 in the morning to maximize the absorption of each. So now I'm going to share some little added tips for maximizing your weight loss, if that's your goal, burning off some body fat. And this is using both hot 
and cold therapy. So let's start with hot, whether you can seek out or you have a sauna yourself. So whether it's a far infrared sauna or a traditional Finnish sauna, these are fantastic. And what they do is they help to increase your heat shock proteins. Now heat shock proteins are a type of stressor in the body. And in this study, it was indicated that, you know, in conditions such as obesity, that can prevent some of these natural stressors, this can be a problem in terms of overall metabolism. And they found that whole body heat stress triggers some of the physiologic responses observed with exercise. So yes, even if you can't exercise or it's between your workouts, if you go into a sauna, and one of the reasons why I love the far infrared sauna is because of the added benefits of that far infrared heat for detoxification and getting those toxins out through your sweat. This is fantastic for almost, it's almost like you're getting exercise and you're just sitting and sweating in the sauna. And that's what the research has shown. Now, another study has shown that heat can help to induce muscular hypertrophy. So muscle growth just from that hot exposure. So if you team up your sauna use with exercise, this, which also helps to increase your muscle mass, these two things can build upon each other. And in this study, they found that in summary, these da data suggest that intermittent hyperthermia, so heat exposure during the reloading effect attenuates oxidative of stress and improves the rate of skeletal muscle regrowth during reloading after immobilization. So in your rest phase between your workouts, especially your weight workouts, when you're trying to stimulate your muscle growth, going in the sauna can really help this. So that is fantastic. I love using the sauna. I don't do it enough. I'm I've got to, you know, make the effort to, to use it more often, but you can really see the gains in terms of your muscle mass by using the sauna in between your workouts. Now let's go to the other extreme, cold thermogenesis. Now being a Canadian girl, you know, having a lot of cold exposure is not a stretch, especially in our cold Canadian winters here. And this is really great for stimulating our brown fat. So getting uncomfortable. So going out into the cold, exposing your body for as long as possible, being, of course, being safe at the same time, but allowing for that brown fat to accumulate, which is more metabolically active than our white fat. And we can actually cause our white fat to beige. And what that means, the more brown your fat is, it means it has more mitochondria and mitochondria is what makes energy. So this is something that is fantastic that we have the ability to do this. Now, if you don't live in a cold climate, like I do here in Canada, you can do this using ice baths, which of course are very popular now using ice packs on your body, using it on areas where you do have more body fat, just try it out and let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments how this is working for you if you're trying to target some of that fat burning and of course, or that fat oxidation and doing it in a natural way. Now, one of the other things that cold does is it helps with the production of our own water in our body. And it's something that in, I've talked about the deuterium depletion and deuterium depleted water water, deuterium is very heavy. It slows down our mitochondrial function. That's not what we want. We can actually stimulate more of that deuterium depleted water production in our own bodies from having that cold exposure. So this is great. You can see how some of the information in my shows all kind of ties together and often the things that you haven't heard for weight loss. So I hope that this is helping you. And finally, you know that I always like to make at some point that mind body connection based on the topic that I'm discussing. So when we talk about the mind-body connection for weight loss, I want you and I want to impress upon you the idea that more meditation and less medication. I think I should make that a quote. More meditation, less medication. What does that mean? So medication often is, and people use food as a medication to help, whether it's the emotional stresses, the traumas, the stress of the day, it could be boredom, using that and food in the wrong way. Food is fuel. It's meant to fuel us, to give us energy so we can carry out the tasks of the day and to stay healthy. But we use food. I think a lot of us can, you know, appreciate the fact that we use food for a lot of reasons beyond using it as fuel. And of course, there's the social aspect of food, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if this is a chronic issue and food is becoming a medication, 
meditation can really help individuals that are struggling with their stresses, with, you know, the anxieties, with all of the wrong reasons why they may be going to food as, you know, something other than what it's intended for. So I highly, highly recommend, especially if you've got stress issues, adrenal issues, cortisol issues, leptin issues, to make a point of doing five, 10, maybe 15 minutes of meditation every day. It is a huge game changer in terms of your whole hormonal response, your stress response, and really finding that balance for yourself. One of the best things that you can do along with that meditation is to focus in on your breathing. And did you know that breathing is when we release the most fat. About 84% of the fat that is oxidized happens while we are sleeping, while we are breathing. So that CO2 that we are releasing through the breath, this is part of our fat oxidation and getting rid of all of that extra body weight that we don't need and we don't want. So I hope you love this episode. I love the information. You know, I love doing the research for these shows as well. The things that I've learned along the way to help you on your journeys, especially with weight loss, one of the most difficult things to do. It's one thing then to lose the weight, but to keep it off as well and staying on track is a daunting task for so many of us. So I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I talked all about weight loss, what you haven't heard, and why you are not losing weight. Please continue to send me your questions, your comments, any show ideas. Please drop them in the comment section below. I love to interact with all of you. Be sure to share this video as well and give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and turn on those post notifications by clicking that bell. Everyone has a calling in life and one of mine is to educate you to live life in tune and in line with nature. Thanks for watching.